Don't get your hopes up, Paul. Just don't. Don't get your hopes up again. Oh, darn it. My hopes are up again. Hey, everybody, this is the Techno Funk Boy. And um, yeah, so oh, we have a special edition of a DM's Guide to Dragonlance today. Um, I, I, I'm getting flashbacks to what was it? I think last year when they were uh, dropping some hints uh, about some Dragonlance content and um, got my hopes up then. <laughs> and um, uh, and that's not really what we got we, we, we got well we got a book of dragons um unearth the arcana uh just came out heroes of kryn and this is specifically you know dragonlance themed stuff and um uh and so you know obviously the first thing uh <laughs> the first thing we th uh, so un unearth arcana just so so very often uh you know is is kind of testing ground for what ends up in books and so um this does seem promising that there will actually be a Dragonlance campaign setting or or a campaign uh coming up it makes sense because the first of the new trilogy uh the new Dragonlance trilogy of novels by Weiss and Hickman is coming out in uh in actually just a matter of months now I, I saw that Margaret Weiss um uh, said that you'll be able to pre-order uh copies from her in June and I, I uh in, uh, oh I I did not write down the date uh of, of the full release but it is uh, it, it is I think it's August September yeah y'all will correct me y'all will correct me in the in in the comments. Uh, should have looked that up before I started talking about it, right? Unearth Arcana is Dragonland stuff, and so obviously we've got to talk about it. It's um I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna kind of spoil things right away, and this mostly looks really good. Um, I was uh, I was I was cringing a little bit, little bit at the beginning, uh, but it, it comes through, and there's a lot in here that I really 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 like so um we have a a a a, a player uh, a player race here uh the kinder which is the one that we would expect from dragon lance uh the sorcerer a sorcerer subclass which um which is uh which is really fun um that's that's been kind of one of the that was one of the questions of one of my first dragon lance videos and by the way by the way if you are new here i've done a lot of dragon lance videos we we're uh, i'm actually playing through the original modules um and um uh, but but in as a fifth edition game and so i've been making videos as we go you know kind of kind of giving uh uh give, giving some tips on running dragon lance uh, uh today and um uh, just giving some ideas along the way and so if you haven't subscribed already, please do for more Dragonlance content. Um, all right, so uh, Sorcerer, uh, one of one of the first videos that I did uh, was how how to handle in Kryn all of the different caster classes that um, uh, you know would would they be subjected to the uh, to the towers of high sorcery and that sort of thing. Uh, some some clarification on what like sorcerers might do in this situation is a lot is is a lot of cool. Some backgrounds for the Knights of Slumnia and the and a mage of high sorcery with some really fun stuff and some feats that are are mostly uh, are mostly tied to those those backgrounds and those type of players which is which is fun which is fun all right so let's take a look at, at a little bit of this um, we, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna deal with the kinder first and um, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of this is uh, you know uh, the 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 normal kind of description of of a kinder. Uh, you are small. Your wa walking speed is thirty, and um, uh, it, you're brave. You have advantages on saving throws you make to avoid uh, or in the frightened condition on yourself. Um, and you know, in uh, as we go, we might do like a comparison between the kinder as described here and the kinder in Tassoff pouch uh, Tassoff's pouches. Uh, from Dragonlance Nexus, because uh, I I actually like their Kinder better. Um, but um, I you know I have always I've always 
uh, uh, played the played the Kinder in my game as immune to fear, uh, but uh, in here advantage on saving throws. I guess they didn't want to uh, push it quite that far. Um, Kinder Ace. So this is one. Of, this is one of the things that I don't like here. It is turning kind of the quirky characteristics of the Kinder into magic. And instead of just being quirky characteristics. So, um, <clears throat> starting at third re- le- uh, level, you possess a magical ability to pull an item out of a bag or another container as a bonus action. Um, uh, and so, and then you, you roll it on this, this Kinder Aces table, uh, to determine what item you pull out. And it is, it is basically, uh, an illusion. It disappears after an hour. And so, this can be really, really useful in a lot of cir- circumstances. I'm not really complaining about the ability. I think it's actually fairly cool. Um, you know, you know, pulling out uh, 5d6 gold pieces, pretty rad. Uh, a, a simple weapon of your choice could be uh, extremely useful. I can uh, I can see a lot of situations where um, you know they're needing something in like the uh, uh, the the Kinder. Uh, it is just like, is like pulling stuff out of the bag, trying to get the thing is like, Oh, I know I have it in here somewhere. It could be a really comical scene. Uh, you can use this as a bonus action to a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. And so like, uh, y- you can, you can start getting up there where you're, you're doing, uh, several of these to try, try to get a weapon or try to get, uh, try to get, uh, something, you know, um, you can drink his take. Uh, anyways, the rolling, I kind of dig, I kind of dig it. Um, my issue with it is like this, that, that's not like the kinder have a lot of crap in their pouches and they don't, they don't know what's in there because they kind of just collect things and they grab things and they throw it in there and they don't think about it again. And so they, every time it's not a magical thing, it's just like they're, they're opening up their bags like, Oh, I didn't, when did, where did I get this? I don't remember because they don't remember. And, uh, and so I, I think in Tasselhoff's, um, you know, there, there is a, uh, there's a kinder roll table, which I think is actually pretty rad. Uh, and, uh, and you can, you can pull, uh, you, you, you could pull just an item out of this, uh, out of this pouch at any time. I think is a lot of fun. Um, this one turns it magical. Taunt also is a supernatural ability to home in on a, a creature's emotional raw nerves and craft a taunt that frustrates a creature. That's like, um, it's weird to describe the Kinder's ability to be super annoying as a supernatural ability. You know, that that's just taking it from, you know, from like like just part of their personality is to be irritating uh in 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 a in a, in a hugely hu- humorous way way for us. Uh you know, not necessarily for the uh for the characters themselves. Uh that's the that is the real challenge of playing a Kinder is uh how to make the players laugh but their characters annoyed um and that that's that's always a lot of fun to do uh i didn't scroll down that far um anyways i see where they're going with this i see where they're going with this but they're kind of turning you know being a kinder into into a into a a magic trick or a spell um which it, it I, I don't necessarily like that uh, that direction. I think I think this roll table is a lot of fun and could be very very uh, humorous and useful in a lot of situations. Um, that I think uh, I think would be pretty rad. Uh, uh, I, I would just I would much prefer it as um, as uh, as just something just, just something about the Kinder nature that uh, uh, you know that they're they're curious about things they want to grab things they want to touch things they want to put it in their bag and then they forget about it uh and um in in the kind of the way that we love uh sorcerer subclass so this is pretty cool so this specifically is is connecting the the sorcerer to the moons like our wizards are uh but in a in a in in, a, in kind of a quirky and fun way that makes them not just other wizards that are, you know, getting power from the same place, but getting that power in a very sorcery way, which is very cool. Um, so, 
you, uh, uh, so <clears throat> the first thing about this is that you are still tied to the phases of the moon. It's done in a different way here. Um, uh, this is one of the things that I really loved about wizards in Dragonlands is that their power is connected to the moon. And so it is a little bit annoying as the DM to just chart the, the, the phases of the moon, but it does actually affect the wizard, which I love. Um, this one does it too, but the player is more in control of that phase. And so it's not necessarily the phase of the moon. It is the phase of the moon inside the player. I said that in the most cheesy way possible, uh, but we're going to kind of get to that. So first of all is I love this. The manifestations of lunar magic is that there is a, uh, there is a physical manifestation in your character that of, of this connection and and it gives it and it gives uh it could give hints as to what phase you're in which is which is pretty uh uh, uh oh I'm, you know i'm sorry i um uh, uh I, I was thinking of this pupil's uh shift in place matching the current phase of the moon from your world uh that actually okay it follows the moon that you're connected with and not the phase in your heart uh but I love that. I like that. That one, that one's really cool. I love, you know, I kind of love that idea of like crescent eyes, uh, cause you're connected with the, the moon. I think that's pretty rad. Um, moon fire. You can call down radiant light from the moon on command. It, uh, you learn sacred flame, which doesn't count against the number of sorcerer cantrips. You know, uh, when you cast the spell, uh, you can target, uh, one creature as normal or target two creatures within range. So, all right, pretty cool. You know, kind of first level thing. The, uh, this is the more interesting part. Um, I, um, uh, I, 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 I was a little confused on this point. So I watched nerd immersions video, by the way, you know, that, that video, his video was on this was great. It was just great. He was confused about it too. We'll get clarification as we go. All right. So this is where we start th thinking about what phase are you in? Um, and you choose as a sorcerer, you choose your phase, uh, uh it, you know, uh, as you finish a long rest. Um, and, your phase is going to give you access to certain spells and abilities at an increased pace uh, uh, that you're going to be able to use, you know, in different ways. So, um, uh, if you're in if you are in a full moon, then you get um, uh, basically access to these spells that you can cast once with no spell slot. So this is just a bonus spell of that of, of your phase that you can just do once per long rest. Now the thing I was confused on, it looks like you can doesn't matter what level you're on, you get it once per day. You once per long rest. I, it, it it could mean one you know one one of each of these like one fairy fly, uh, uh, fire and then you know mask cure wounds and then a moonbeam. It could mean that. That's not the way I'm reading it because uh, it's right here at the bottom. Let me get it out of my face. Um, uh, once you cast a spell in this way, you can't do so again until you finish long rest. I'm reading that as once, once per day. So this um, this uh, this is extremely useful at the beginning of the game and less so at the end. But still, access to these extra uh, extra spells. Really, really rad. The, the lunar boons. This is super cool too. You were really, uh, I really, really amping up your sorcerer here. Um, uh, and so each phase, again, you can change your phase on, on, on a long rest. Uh, whenever you use meta magic or a spell from the lunar spells table, uh, which, um, was here, uh, or, or spell of school of magic associated with the loser phase you're in, which is right here. You can reduce the sorcery points spent by one minimum of zero. Uh, and, uh, and so you regain, um, uh, you can reduce the spell sorcery points, for magic, uh, in your meta magic, uh, a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, regain them all on the long rest. Super cool. Uh, super cool. I, uh, I, I, again, just a, uh, adding 
you know, adding castings, adding power. I, I like this. Waxing and waning. This is a uh, sixth level. Uh, you get uh, greater control over your own phases. And so as a bonus action, you can spend a sorcery point to change your phase. Um, lunar empowerment. This is, um, uh, uh, you know, now, now your phase is going to give you additional, uh, additional bonuses, full moon. Uh, and, and by, of course, by this time you are, you can change, you can change it by spending a sorcerer point at will. Um, the full moon shed a bright light. Uh, creatures of your choice have advantage on saving throws while within the bright light. That's pretty nice. Uh, new moon, you have advantage on, on stealth. Uh, when you're in dim light or darkness, attack rolls have disadvantage against you. Uh, uh again, terribly useful in, in uh, certain cir uh, circumstances. Crescent moon, you have resistance to necrotic and radiant damage. Uh, really nice. Uh, lunar phenomena, we're up to 18th level. Um, you can tap into a special power to this bonus action, uh, that you're, uh, to whatever phase you are in. And you can also use your bonus action to change your phase. And so if you want like the full moon bonus, you can, uh, you can switch and then use the power. Um, full moon, you radiate intense moonlight for a moment. Each creature of your choice within 30 me uh, uh, feet must succeed in a con save or be blinded. Uh, in addition, one creature of your choice ga regains 3D hit point, uh, 3D eight hit points. Whoa, that, yeah, that would be useful. That would be, that's like a, that's a, that'd be a great desperation spell right there. That's really cool. Uh, new moon, um, uh, a momentary emanate, uh, an uh, oppressive gloom, uh, creature of your choice within 30 feet must succeed on a deck save. Uh, against your spell or take 3d10 necrotic damage and have its speed reduced to zero until the end of its next turn. In addition, you become invisible. Nice. Uh, Crescent Moon, you slip through light and darkness. You can magically teleport to an unoccupied space. You can see 30 feet of yourself. In addition, you gain resistance to all damage until the end, uh, start of your next turn. Very nice. Uh, the, um, this is one this is once per long rest but you can spend sorcery points to kind of redo it which is pretty neat backgrounds okay so um these backgrounds are going to be connected uh to feats when we get to the feats the feats are, are mostly just putting you on a path if uh if you want to be a nice salamnia this is going to be this is going to be the path that um that that is set up uh you know I guess recommended for you I, I don't think there's anything forcing you down these paths but it is it is definitely set up so the backgrounds are going to be you know give you a little bit of thing but this it's going to be connected to a feat which is the thing that we're going to get to so um the like so okay night of salamnia feature squire of salamnia that's the first thing you're going to do and uh then it's going to have some personality traits you know uh trinkets uh, that you can do. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, we're going to skip, we're going to fly through this really quick because the feats are the important thing here. Mage of high sorcery, you're going to get a, a, a feature of, uh, is the feat of the initiate. Um, trinkets, personalities, characteristics, that sort of thing. Um, there is, as we get into the feats, and let me see, wait, let me see what's first. Yeah, okay, we're going to do mages first. There's a lot of feats in here, and that's because we have the, um, the, 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 first of all, the feats to get into both orders, but then the feats branching out into the different areas of this order, which is, of course, three each. And so there is, uh, there's a lot here, uh, in, in that regard. All right, so let's uh, let's go down to initiate, and then we're going to kind of work our way back up. So uh, initiate, um, you're gonna uh, you're going to choose your moon, and so um, uh, this now this like uh, this is particular to Kren, right? Uh, there there have been some notes el uh, elsewhere about the moons that you can pick, the moon, but this is. This stuff is Kren focused here. Um, choose, uh, and so you're going to go ahead and choose your, your moon. You can choose the chosen first level spell without a spell. Uh, you can cast the chosen first level spell, which is, uh, you can, it's down here, uh, without a spell slot, which is kind of, uh, which is kind of rad. So this is just a special spell slot for that, uh, for that spell, which is pretty cool. 
Um, and um, uh, you you're going to choose your spell casting ability. Um, uh, uh, you know, which is going to be connected with your class and all. So, Notari, um, uh, you know, you're going to uh, you're going to choose your cantrip. You're going to choose your first level spell um, that is going to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, classed in the, in this kind of bonus, you know, your chosen first level spell without a spell slot. Um, <clears throat> New Atari, Chill Tusk, Mage Hand, Vicious Mockery, very cool. New Atari, Guidance Message, Prestidigitation, Solinari, Produce Flame, Resistance, Spare the Dying. And then uh, the different... Um, the different moons are going to have connected to it different uh, uh, different uh, schools. <clears throat> now, once we get up there, um, oh, I lost it. Okay. From there, we're going to um, uh, we're going to kind of get into the uh, the adepts. Uh, of the of the different robes one thing i absolutely love alignment is 100 percent in here you know if you if you're a good if you're a good alignment you are not going to be black robes if you um if you are um uh, evil you're not going to be white uh, white robes uh i I love it you know uh wizards has been getting away from alignment more and more but especially with the Tower of High Sorcery, alignment is just kind of baked into Dragonlance. And so I think it's pretty cool. So you've got to be fourth level. You got to be, you have to have the initiative of High Sorcery feet. And then, you know, you got to be the proper alignment, at least for the black robes and the white robes. Um, black robes, ambitious magic. Okay. So this is, this is kind of the, the next step. You get a second level spell that you're going to be able to cast. In its own, in its own spell, special spell slot that, uh, that, uh, it, it's just an, uh, uh, you can cast it once per day without, uh, without a spell slot. Very cool. This is the fun stuff. I like, I really like this life channel. You can channel your life force into the power of your magic. So when a creature, uh, within six feet fails on a saving throw against a spell you cast, basically you're going to do extra damage. You can, uh, you can expend a number of hit dice equal to the level of the spell and then you roll uh you roll that hit dice that that hit die equal to half the number of this hit dice expended round it up okay so let's think about fireball fireball uh, and so you know kind of baked into this is that this has got to be this has got to not be a roll to hit spell this is a roll this is a um uh a, a saving throw roll you cast fireball. They they miss their save. You can amp uh, amp up that fireball by using three of your own hit dice into the spell, and then you're gonna ca you're gonna throw two of those dice to add damage. Pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool. Just uh, I mean, really, really turn up the heat on these spells. I think that's really neat. All right, uh, red robes. Uh, again, second level spell. Um, uh, th that's going to be the first thing we see in all of these. Magical balance. This is fun. When you make an attack roll, an ability check, or a saving throw, and roll a nine or lower on the d20, you can use your reaction to balance fate and uh, and and treat the roll as a ten. Um, you can use this reaction a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. So you can do this, you know, uh, as you grow multiple times a day. And regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. Pretty neat. I, I love this. I love this. So um, you know, this uh, this is not this is not something that's going to be a guaranteed victory. But it's just when you just blow it. You know, when you just blow it, and you 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 need that to be better. Um, <laughs> And, uh, uh, you, you know, like this is, uh, I don't think this is ever going to save you from a DC 22, um, you know, attack, but it's going to be one of those where, you know, you, you, you really got to get out of the way of that fireball and, you know, you have, uh, 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 uh for some reason you're a wizard and you have a plus five on your, on your deck save. That's not going to happen. You just go with me here, you know, <laughs> um, uh, you can use that. Um, uh, you know, this is this is going to be of limited 
use, but when, uh, but when things are critical and when you blow that roll, it, this could, this could literally be a lifesaver for you. And, um, uh, and so I, I, I think that's, I think that's pretty fun. Um, white robes, again, our second level spell, protective ward. When you are a creature, you can see within 30 feet of you takes damage. You can use your reaction to expend a spell slot and weave protective magic around the target. Roll a number of D4s equal to the level of the spell sp- slot, uh, expended and reduce the damage, uh, uh, the target takes by the to- uh, total rolled on those dice plus your spell casting ability modifier. Thank goodness you said plus the spell casting ad- uh, uh, ability modifier. Um, you know, uh, this can really help in a pinch, but you know, uh, you know, rolling D4s, you know, average 2.5, it's not going to be the greatest, you know, uh, uh, you know, when you're, when you're facing down something really tough and you're burning a, a three, a third level spell slot to get an average of 7.5 plus your spellcaster, uh, modifier. The spellcaster modifier is going to be the big difference there, of course. And so, um, you know, hopefully that, uh, it, you know, that, that pumps it up a bit more. And so you can, you can get it, uh, you get it there. But I, yeah, I, even then it's like, you're, um, you're, I mean, you're spending like a, a third level spell slot to, uh, you know, divert like, I don't know, like 11 points of damage mm-hmm. on average rolls, you know, uh, you know, if, if you've got, if you've got, if you rolled 7.5, so it's let's say eight, you got a plus three or plus four on, on your modifier, 12 damage, um, that could be good. It could be great. It, it, it. Uh, but if you're facing something really big and bad, uh, that, uh, that's a big ask. <laughs> it's a big ask for 12 points. I, um, uh, that was not my favorite. Uh, it, but, but I can see c- circumstances like the, the black robe one. That's, that's super cool. That's super cool. Uh, the, the red, um, the red one is, uh, I, I think, uh, I think pretty fun in limited circumstances. And uh, I, I think can be very, it could be a lifesaver in limited circumstances. Uh, the white robe one, again, in limited circumstances and possibly even more limited circumstances, it could, it could be, it could be a life or death thing, but you know, uh, when, when, when you're in that circumstance, you're going to be happy you had it. Right. Um, so let's, uh, let's get over, um, to uh, divinely favored, uh, the uh, a god has chosen you to to carry a spark of their divine power. You uh, learn the, uh, the thaumaturgy cantrip and one first level spell based on the alignment of your character, as specified in the alignment spells table, which we've looked at. You can cast that first level spell without a spell slot. So, um, yeah, very nice. Um, uh, divine communications, which is the step beyond divinely favored you get uh uh you know basically you're in more in uh greater contact with uh with your god um ability score increase uh uh celestial tongues which is uh which is fun all of a sudden you can you can talk celestial which um and two other languages so this is yeah like uh this one's this one's big uh you can cast uh augury uh and commune spell without a spell slot uh it, you must finish 1d4 long rest before you can cast it again in this way uh you can also cast the spell using spell slots if you have the appropriate level okay um Let's get to the knights. Let's get to the knights. So we got the squire. Uh, okay, so um, we've got the the squire of Salamnia, and I think um, do I remember? I you know now that I'm looking at it, what does this even mean? Prerequisite squireships into the knights of Salamnia. I I think uh, you know I th- I. I'm thinking that this just means you have to actually have been um, uh, accepted into the program, you know, uh, pass the interest exam is all that. Um, I might be mistaken here. I might have missed something, but that's kind of how I'm reading it. All right. So martial training, proficient with medium armor, martial weapons, defensive rider. You have advantage on saving throws made to avoid uh, falling off a mount. That's kind of that, you know, if, you, if you're going to play, you know, a mounted knight for the for the rest of the campaign. 
that's actually fairly helpful. Uh, encouraging rally. Uh, when another creature you can see within 30 feet, it makes a saving throw. You can use your reaction to inspire them. If the, assuming the target can hear and understand you, gains advantage on the saving throw. Once you use this reaction, you can't use it until you finish a long rest. Pretty good. Uh, I like that one. Um, and that's going to get us into the, into the different, uh, into the different orders of the night. Uh, so the night of the crown is first ability score increase. Um, and, uh, this is for strength or decks. Tactical teamwork. When a creature you see within 30 feet of you makes an attack roll against another creature within five feet, you can, uh, of, uh, of you, you can use your reaction to grant advantage on the attack roll. You can use this reaction a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and you gain all. Okay. So, um, so yeah, since you're going to be probably at front, if somebody's beside you, uh, this could, um, yeah, this could, this could be really good in, in, uh, in making short work of these, um, of these, uh, uh, uh creatures. And, um, the, okay. So your ally, uh, so uh, according to the text, this might this might be a mistake, but the the enemy's got to be within five feet of you. The ally's got to be within thirty feet. So you can do this actually with a ranged attack too. Pretty nice. Um, of the sword, uh, you get proficiency in intelligence, wisdom, or charisma saving throws. That's a uh, that's pretty cool. Um, an extra um, uh, an extra proficient um, saving throw. It's pretty nice. Immediately after you are a creature you see within 30 feet of fail and in intelligence, wisdom, or charisma saving throw, you can expend a hit dice. The saving throw increases by the amount equal to the roll of that hit die. Potential. Okay. That now see that that's a gr that's a that's a huge bonus. Cause that's a, like, I mean, if you're, you know, you're probably, you're, you're probably playing some kind of fighter, um, you know, in this scenario. Uh, and so you have a higher hit dice. And so adding a D10 to, um, when, uh, when one of your allies, uh, fails, fails a, a, a roll could be huge. Um, once you have turned a failed saving throw into a successful one using this, now this I like. You can't do it again until you finish a long rest. That's pretty cool. Uh, cause so you don't lose it if you fail. Like if, if that person rolls a one and it's like they still fail, you still keep that, that ability until the, until one succeeds. And so, um, I do hate, yeah, I do hate expending things and then they just flop, you know? Um, Knight of the Rose, uh, ability score is con or charisma. Bolstering rally. Uh, when you roll initiative, you can, uh, you can choose up to three creatures you can see within 30 feet of you. Each creature gains temporary hit points equal to the roll of your hit die, plus your proficiency bonus, plus the ability modifier of the ability score increased by this feat. Okay. All right. So either con or charisma. Um, you can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. Uh, so, okay, this is, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So you can choose up to three creatures. So, all right, we're going to just say we're, you know, we're paladin here and we got a, like a plus three or plus four on charisma. Um, we, we've, we've done the increase, uh, D10, um, uh, hit die, uh, plus your proficiency bonus plus, uh, the ability modifier. And so, you know, you, have, uh, you got, I don't know, uh, uh, depending on the level, you might have a three on the proficiency bonus, another three on, um, the ability modifier. Then you roll a, a D10, you know, average, uh, average roll five or six, you know, three P three people get, uh, uh, 14 hit temporary hit points. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, that's a, the, I, I like that one. Uh, I like that one a lot. Um, so. That, um, that's what we got. That's what we got. Uh, so I mostly really love this. I re uh, like most of this. I really love the, the kinder part is not my favorite. The rest of it I think is really cool. And, um, I, um, I like, I, I've never played a sorcerer. I, I avoid them like the plague. Um, this sounds like a cool sorcerer. 
This sounds like a really cool Zorb shirt. Uh, so like uh, that, uh, that's tempting. That's tempting. It 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 makes this this makes me want to play a sorcerer or a paladin. You know, um, uh, cause there's, there's some cool, some cool options here. And then, you know, you get, um, uh, I, you know, hopefully when the book comes out of, uh, don't get your hopes up, Paul, <laughs> uh, you know, we'll have, we'll have a, a lot more detail on what it means to be, to be the knight of Salamnia. And, um, uh, for those of you who've read the books, you know, there's, there's a lot there. There's a lot. There's a lot to this order, and um, you know, uh, uh, and 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 there's a lot. It, there's a lot of potential there because you know this is like this is one of those things that is so so much built up on good intentions, and yet you know, and yet, uh, and so you could play. You, you could play this like like really like really practical and 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 uh in and not all that interested in um uh in you know the greater ideals but you know we got um you know this is uh, uh the, the the best way to accomplish what we need to accomplish type thing or you could like play it really close to to the ideals in the kind of the old fashioned you know lawful good paladin type that um has has gone out of favor but um um i don't know like looking like 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 looking at these kind of options like you know the 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 the, the good paladin the good warrior uh, are things that are looking are looking cooler you know uh and so um uh unfortunately when we start this of course i'm i'm gonna be the dm so i don't know if when this book comes out if some of one of you are running a campaign let me know <laughs> i'm already running dragonland so we will not if if this if this is coming out later this year or early next year uh, uh I'm, I'm not going to be done by then um with uh with the campaign um I gotta come. I got a. Uh, I got a video coming out really, really soon about Thor Barden. Uh, it's really cool area. Really cool area that um, just didn't make the book. Didn't make the original novels at all. But uh, that's not for. Uh, that's not for lack of of the the uh, the modules being super cool. And so we're gonna talk about that next in the next video. I uh, I, I need to kind of amp up my reviews of the novels because I do want like um I uh, I I'm. I'm rereading the Chronicles and interlacing them with the with the Lost Chronicles for the first time, and so I'm out of those six books, I'm four books done, and so really need to finish the last two again before uh, before the next series comes out. I don't know that I'm going to make it through Legends and War of Souls and stuff before then, uh, but um, a guy can try, a guy can try. Uh, so again, if you if you haven't subscribed to me, please please do. Um, this is a uh, this is uh, we we do um, we're going to be doing a, a lot of Dungeons and Dragons videos in general. Uh, I am wrapping up. Uh, if it, most of you should know, hopefully know that I I do the music and play a character in the Dice and Dreary pod uh, actual play podcast, which is Curse of Strahd. Um, Another Tracy Hickman con uh, connected title, at least. Um, and we're uh, on the recording side of it. We're wrapping it up. And so I'm going to start. Re I'm, I'm going to start actually reading the book, uh, which I haven't looked at yet because um, I'm still playing it. Uh, I'm going to start reading the book and doing reviews of, of the different sections of that. Uh, uh, and so we'll be doing Curse of Strahd. We'll be doing Dragonlance. If this book is uh, if 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 a campaign setting or, or Dragonlance campaign comes out, we'll obviously be doing um, uh, thoughts on that. But uh, but in the meantime, uh, I, I do plan to get through um, get through all of the old uh, the old classic the old classic Dragonlance campaigns. And so please do subscribe really really do appreciate it and um yeah with that uh i thanks for hanging on with me so long Whew, there's a lot here it's good stuff we'll uh uh jump into the discord the links down there links to all sorts of other fun stuff y'all know where to find that stuff i'll talk to y'all later bye